Hey YouTube, it's Chris, K2CJB with K2CJB Radio. Welcome back to the channel. This video is going to look at a PT99 10 meter, 11 meter antenna project. We're going to assemble it and we're going to put it up today and hopefully we'll get to test it out. I have a, um, an 11 meter or CB uh, sideband radio that I purchased off of eBay quite a while ago. And uh, I also have an old Radio Shack 10 meter radio that I also purchased off eBay some time ago. And what I use these radios for, well, the CB radio is just kind of fun to kick around with, but the 10 meter radio, I usually leave that in receive mode and I'll just tune it to a beacon and leave it on 24 seven. And if all of a sudden I hear some beacons coming through, then I know 10 meters is open and there's a good chance some other bands are open too. So this is the project, let's get started. I purchased the antenna through Walcott Radio in Iowa. Um, they're a large CB radio supplier. They've got 10 meter radios there and they've also got CB radios, lots of accessories, lots of antennas. So I got the PT99, it all, they had a, a kit, so it came with a ground plane kit, so I'll have, the, I'll have the ground plane radials on it, and also they had a tripod kit with the mast, so I purchased the whole thing from one shop. This is the, this is the mast, so we'll set this aside for the moment. This is the antenna. This is the ground plane kit. I'm going to open up this first. The way the ground plane kit works is there's a center hub, looks like it's made of, of aluminum, and then there's stainless steel hardware, um, just lock washers to hold the radials in place. There are four fiberglass radials and they're 44 inches long. Now let's open the antenna. There are four sections to this antenna. Here's the base section, the SO239 connector on the bottom. And it's a rather thick section of the antenna. I'm assuming these are the tuning rings. They're just nuts on this plastic uh, threaded piece. Um, they don't really make it clear in the direction, so we're gonna have to experiment with this with the antenna analyzer. But I believe these are the tuning rings. Next section is a little bit thinner than that. The next section, a little bit thinner than that, and finally, the top section, which had just a little red cover at the top. Some stainless steel hardware, and we're good to go. The sections thread into each other. So each section threaded together. I just made them hand tight. I didn't think they needed to be much tighter than that. It's pretty easy to assemble so far, sections to thread together. Again, I made them hand tight. Overall length, just under 19 feet. The directions for the ground plane kit hub say to place it a half inch below the glue at the bottom of the tuning threads. I measured a half inch from here to here, made a mark, slid the hub right on top over the bottom mast section here, tightened this up with a 7 16th wrench. I did not really tighten it, I just snugged it. You don't want to really crush anything here. I'm not going to install the radials till after it's up on the roof. It's a little easier to move it around that way. You want to point the radials down away from the vertical antenna. You don't want them pointing up. Next step is to take the tripod out and see how that looks. This looks pretty sturdy. I'm really not too concerned about it. The antenna is very lightweight, so really the only thing to worry about is wind load on it, but I think this is going to do just fine. Something you'll need to order separately for these tripods is a roof pad kit. And let me show you what that is. The roof pad kit, sometimes called a pitch pad kit, has strips of roofing tar and lag screws. And you'll take the roofing tar and you'll place it at the bottom of the feet on the tripod. That way when you snug the screws down into the roof, the roofing tar will spread out into the holes and seal your connection where the tripod mounts onto your roof. Remember, you're making a hole in your roof, so you want to make sure things are sealed. Now, before you make your way up to the roof, make sure you have all the tools you're going to need. To clamp the antenna to the mast, I checked the hardware. I need a 716th wrench. Again, I'm not going to monkey this stuff down. I just want to make it snug and tight. 
Radials, I want to snug up also, they need a half inch wrench. I'm sure there's a metric equivalent for these, but I find that these fit. And to put the lag screws in the roof, bring in my trusty <laughs> hammer driver, with conveniently a 7 16th inch socket. We're in the backyard, we've got all the tools we need. I got the tripod legs extended out. I just stuck the mass in here for now. I'm gonna snug things up a little bit. Of course, we'll adjust it when we get it up top. I'm gonna to put this together where I just bring the tripod and the mast up first, mount it on the roof, and then I can bolt the antenna up on the top and clamp it here. It's, it's not that high up. Luckily, I'm tall, so it's really not that high up. I'll be able to reach this, make the antenna connection, and tune it also from standing on the roof when I get it there. In case you've never used a tripod like this, which I've put dozens of these up throughout my ham radio career, uh, and they've worked fine. I've really had little trouble with them. The way they work is there's a, a lock nut on each bolt. You'll see there's a little nut on the inside. You have to loosen this obviously first on the outside, the lock nut, snug down the bolts, go back and forth so you have it pretty much centered, and then you come back with a wrench and just tighten up the lock nut, and that'll prevent them from walking out. Ladder's in place. Up we go. forgot to bring the pitch pad kit. Just a quick look in how this install works. You see the pitch pad underneath the foot of the tripod. Two lag screws in each one. Made easy with that. <laughs> I have a hammer drill up here with you. So as I was getting the hardware for the mounting clamp for the antenna together, I'm looking at the lock washers. I'm like, these don't seem to line up. Well, go figure, I read the direct directions completely and found that those lock washers are supposed to go between the sections of the antenna. So, we'll do it now. Better we figure it out now than after we put the whole thing up. Okay, I've got all the hardware bits sorted out. We're gonna talk about that later. But uh, right now we go back up to put the antenna up. Here's the final install with the tripod with the pitch pads underneath. I had some RG8 cable, so I used that. Four radials attached, and there's the antenna. Nice. While I'm up here, I thought I would take a quick inspection of the TA33 Junior and rotator and all that, and everything looks just fine. Many of you remember that project, and um, it's still working just fine. This was the first antenna we put up with this QTH. It's a two meter UHF vertical. I don't know who makes it. I bought this at a ham fest. It's got to be 15 years ago. And now we're on the side of the house. I dropped the cable down. I'll dress that up. Actually, all my antenna cables come down together. I just kind of zip tie them together and eventually I'll mount them to the house, but I knew I was gonna keep adding antennas as we went. So that's where we are right now. Moment of truth, we'll hook the cable up, the antenna cable up to my antenna analyzer and see how she looks. Well, we connected everything from outside, so let's fire the radio up and see what we get. Well, that's a good sign. All right, let's uh, see how the signals, how the SWR looks here. This is one end of the band. Let's calibrate. That's the high end, just under two to one on that meter. And at the other end of the band, we'll calibrate it there. And it looks like it's about the same. Yeah, I don't know how accurate that meter is compared to my analyzer, but I think either way, it'll, it'll work fine. Now let's take a listen on 10 meters. 
The way I've got this wired is the two radios go through a little two by one switch on the side. The output of that switch goes through the meter and then out to my antenna plate that I made, kind of an MFJ sort of knockoff for my uh, antenna connections into the house. So let me just flip this switch. And now we'll put on the other radio. And it's set to 28,500 right now. Now the power level on this is gonna be a lot higher. So let's just, yeah, let's uh, bring down a cow. And there's 10 meters. And we expected it would be a little bit higher in 10 meters. But again, I use that radio just to listen for beacons. So the, I really don't transmit on it all that much. So I don't see that being a problem. So that finishes the project. The antenna is up, um, it's, it's, it's sturdy. I'm really not concerned about that, but let's talk a few things about this antenna. First of all, the instructions that come with it are very verbose. <laughs> it's a lot of writing. There's no diagrams. It's just nothing but writing. And I, I don't know, I think that it's just overwritten. I don't think that the instructions were really that good that came with the antenna itself. Let's talk about the hardware issue. You heard me mention that there were lock washers that I had forgotten to put in. Well, actually, no, those lock washers didn't fit where I thought they would go. So it's interesting that the, the threaded sections of the antenna that go together, there are no lock washers to go with that. So what I did was I just snugged it up a little more with a wrench. I had it hand tight, but then I just gave it a little more with a wrench to hold them together. Time will tell if they wander apart. I may have to add lock washers to the vertical part of the antenna, which will be a real pain to do that. The lock washers that came with it, they had four star washers, but they didn't fit anything. And then they had four lock washers that were packed with the ground plane kit that I just assumed went with the four radials, and that's where I put them. So that's how the antenna is assembled right now. Those two large nuts, they are the tuning rings. Um, they come shipped from the factory pretty much in the middle of the range. It's about 60 turns <laughs> all the way, because uh, I experimented with it to see what would happen if I, if I moved them all the way up or all the way down. You saw on the, the sweep of the analyzer that it's resonant to the low end of the CB band. That's with those two nuts brought all the way up to the top of their range. If you go all the way down to the, the bottom of the range, it actually goes much lower than the CB band. So, so it really kind of tells you what frequency is gonna be resonant at. The, the lower those nuts are, the lower the frequency, the higher up the, the, that little plastic piece they are, the higher the frequency that the antenna is resonant. It's not fully resonant in CB, as you saw. I don't know if that's because I've got the antenna about six feet off the roof where they recommend 10 to 12. I don't know if that's it. I don't know if it's just the proximity of other things around. I don't know if it's because the ground plane kit's on it. I really can't figure that out. So for the way I operate CB, which isn't all that much, and the way I'll be using it to monitor 10 meters, I think it's gonna be just fine. Hopefully this video was informative and it helped you if you're considering buying one of these antennas, you can see a little bit of how it goes together. I can tell you this, just be prepared to run up and down a roof a few times to tune those tuning rings to get it, get it resonant uh, to, to where you wanna operate. If you like this video, please click like. I really appreciate that. And also, would you please consider subscribing to the channel? Um, if you like ham radio videos or any kind of radio kind of stuff, that's pretty much what I do here. It's uh, I, I look at this channel as a journal of my, my ham radio activities. So um, if you'd like to hit the subscribe button, make sure you hit the bell. You get notified every time I drop another video. Until next time, 73 from K2CJB.